on this Monday, Thursday, before we begin our worship, I do want to share with you some announcements regarding this very holy and special evening. For those of you who've never shared in a Monday, Thursday service, or if it's been quite some time, the word Monday, Thursday reminds us, as we will reflect on in Scripture tonight, of Mandate Thursday. That's where the word derived from, Mandate Monday, as a reminder of Jesus' new mandate, his new commandment, that we love one another, that was instituted on this Holy Thursday more than 2,000 years ago. You'll notice that there's much symbolism in this evening's worship. You see that there are no pyramids on the pulpit. The, uh, there's a lot of black. There's a lot of drab. In fact, after Holy Thursday, the sanctuary remains in darkness where there's no liturgical colors symbolizing the time that our Savior is in the tomb in preparation for resurrection morning on Easter. Also, you'll notice uh, this evening that the lighting throughout the service will continue to become darker as we journey with our Lord to the place of his uh, crucifixion, which will be uh, most significantly memorialized tomorrow on Good Friday. I also want to uh, share with you how we will be receiving communion this evening. We'll have four elders that will be serving. You all are invited to come to the front. We'll form a line on each side so there will be servers for the bread and the cups on each side. So this side will come, everyone down the center, then you'll return to your seat on the exterior. Everyone is invited to share in the Holy Feast too. This is not our table, a Presbyterian table, it's the Lord's table. If we don't feel we deserve this meal or are worthy to receive it, then we need it most of all. So you all are invited to be nourished by the grace of our Lord. Mention the lights also. Nearing the end of the service, the sanctuary will become completely dark. At that time, you'll hear a loud bang. It will be the pulpit Bible slamming against the pulpit, symbolizing the closing of the tomb. So I want to prepare you for that. After that, you're invited to continue meditating in the darkness for 60 seconds, and then you'll hear three rings of the bell symbolizing the three days our Lord was buried in the tomb. I pray that each of you have a wonderful, holy experience. I'm grateful for those of you who are visiting with us this evening. If you have a wonderful worship experience and are without a church home, maybe this is the Lord saying you've come home. May God's grace be with you as we worship the Lord.
My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? From the words of my groaning, oh my God, I cry day by day, but that you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our ancestors trusted, they trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. Would you join me in prayer? Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we may more perfectly love you and more worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who gathered his disciples for that last meal before his betrayal, crucifixion, and death. As we reenact that last supper tonight, fill us with the love that sent him to the cross so that we may be sent out in loving sacrificial service for his glory and in his name we pray amen friends would you join with me in standing and sharing in our hymn of praise number 92 The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God who were born not of the blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. The gospel tells us that Jesus called to himself twelve disciples. These men, too, will be represented by lighted candles this evening, as is the Christ Christ candle. Matthew records the words of Jesus as he spoke to them, saying, You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a bushel basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, 
Let your light shine before others so they may see the good works and give glory to the Father in heaven. Jesus called Simon Peter, who he would later name the rock to be a disciple. He also called Simon Peter's brother, Andrew. Jesus called James to be a disciple. James was a fisherman with his brother John, whom Jesus also called to be a disciple. Jesus called Thomas, who would become the doubter to be a disciple. And Jesus called Matthew, the sinful tax collector, to be his disciple. He also called Judas Iscariot, who would become his betrayer. Jesus called Philip, who witnessed to the Ethiopian eunuch. Jesus called Simon the zealot, whose passion for his faith wanted to outcast Rome. And Jesus called James the son of Alphaeus and Bartholomew and Thaddeus. In order to symbolize the 12 sons of Jacob and the 12 tribes of the people Israel, Jesus chose these 12 for his inner circle. Such a variety of personalities. He chose to serve him from all different backgrounds, all different theologies, all different places, all to be one in him. One might wonder how they could ever get along. But under their master's constant care, they discovered the deep unity found in him. I invite you now to consider our brokenness. These words that call us to confession is a reminder that Jesus has called us to be his modern day friends and disciples. As we gather on this holy night, we remember how his first disciples deserted him. We recognize how in our own sinful ways we also desert him today. John, the beloved disciple, reminds us, when we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So let us this evening use the words of the Old Testament prophet Isaiah to confess our sins against our Lord and against each other and seek his forgiveness and reconciliation. To do so, we share these holy words of Isaiah 53 together as they're printed in your bulletin. Will you pray with me? Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter. And like a sheep that before its shearers is silent. So he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich." Although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. In the name of Jesus, our Lord, we pray. 
Amen. Let us receive now the words of the prophet written a thousand years before Jesus, the assurance of our pardon found in him. Will you pray with me? Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light and he shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, you came into this world as its light. On this holy evening, we ask that you open our eyes and help us to see the path you've placed before each of us more clearly. Your holy word, O oh God, proclaims to us that you indeed, Jesus, were the word made flesh. Will you open our ears and help us to hear? And your grace, O oh God, is the wellspring of life. Will you open our hearts? that we may feel the living waters of your grace. Come, O oh God, help us to hear and see and understand more clearly the holiness of your words. In Christ we pray. Amen. Our scripture lesson this evening on this Mandate Thursday, this Monday Thursday, is Jesus' last teaching with his disciples on this Holy Thursday before his betrayal, his arrest. Let's hear these last words that Jesus wanted his friends to receive and us today as his fellow disciples. From John 13. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed do not, does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he put on his robe and returned to the table. And he said to them, do you know what I've done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. 
So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their masters, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. And from verse 31, And when Jesus had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Friends, join me in our hymn of preparation. Would you share with me in hymn number 101? those who will be serving join me at the table on this faithful holy thursday our lord jesus gathered as we commemorate this evening with his disciples and he took bread and broke it he gave it to them and said, take, eat. 
This is my body broken for you. Eat this bread and do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after the meal, Jesus took the cup and said, This is the cup of the new covenant, which is sealed in my blood that is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Take, drink, all of you, and do this in remembrance of me. And even today, as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord. As you, elders of the faith, have been nourished, nourish the world around you. Jim, position there. Let's go down just a little bit further. Thank you. Would you come and share in the Holy Spirit? After the meal and then they'd sung to the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I'm raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all of the disciples. Jesus went with them to the place called Gethsemane and he said to his disciples sit here while I go over there and pray he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated then he said to them I'm deeply grieved 
even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. You have fed us, O oh Lord, with the bread of life and renewed us for your service. Help us who have shared Christ's body and received his cup to be his faithful disciples so that our daily living may be part of the life of your kingdom and our love. Be your love, reaching out into this world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Then he came to his disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed the third time, saying the same words. And he came to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived with him, and with him was a large crowd with swords and clubs, and the chief priest and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign saying, the one I will kiss is the man, arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in this temple teaching and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scripture of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Jesus was led from the garden to appear before Annas and the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest, the council of the chief priests, elders, and scribes, the Sanhedrin. They heard various false witnesses testify against him during the night. 
Early the next morning, he was led to Pilate, the Roman governor, for condemnation. Upon hearing Jesus was from Galilee, Pilate sent Jesus to King Herod, who was visiting in Jerusalem. Herod and his soldiers treated Jesus with great contempt, and to mock him as king, they put a purple robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. Pilate examined Jesus, declared him guilty of no crime three times, but then ordered him to be scourged, beaten, tortured, and yielded to the demands of Jesus' fellow Jews and condemned him to death on the cross. So they took Jesus, and he went out, bearing his own cross, to the place called the skull, which is Golgotha. There they crucified him, two criminals, one on either side, with Jesus in between them. Pilate also write a, wrote a title and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Tradition has it that the Via Dolorosa, or the Street of Sorrows, in Jerusalem is the path that Jesus took to the cross. Uh, this, this song by that name serves to remind us of Jesus' words in John 10, 18, when he said, No one takes my life from me but I lay it down of my own accord. Oh! 